Hey everyone, welcome back to our series, Are We There Yet? You're you. I'm me. And I'm V. And last week we talked about spiritual gifts. Yep, so we are able to fly out to Georgia, see some of the cool sites. We went to the Olympic Park, lots of talent there. A lot of talent there. Um, and then you ditched me and you went on some more adventures. How rude, a little, a little sad about that. You're but. just never gonna let me live that one down, are you? Never, Well, never. here, I got you another little something something. <gasps> another magnet. Yep. Oh, it's from Charleston, South Carolina. I wonder where he went without me. Anyways, uh, yes, I went to South Carolina. Um, so let's check it out. Hey guys, welcome to the You, Me, and V show. Who are you? Oh, am I supposed to do that now? I'm me. Hey guys, welcome to the You, Me, and V show. You're you. I'm me. And, and I'm V. She's me. me. I want to say that. Hey guys, welcome to the You, Me, and V show. You're you. I'm me. And I'm V. We are in one of the Carolinas. Um, there's three, right? Yeah, no. We're in South Carolina and there are two Carolinas, North and South, easy to remember. Oh, my bad. Anyways, we're so excited to be here, so excited for my special guest. This is my father-in-law, AKA Popo Gijo. Yes. Um, if you're asking what that means, I have no idea, honestly. I don't yeah. remember where that came from, but I call him Popo Gijo, but um, I am married to his son, so. That's where you get all that. That's right. You know what? You're you're like my favorite first daughter-in-law. Mm. Yeah, road trips are awesome. And you know, I love the beach. And being here at the beach reminds me of when I was a kid at the beach. Yeah? Yeah. That was a long time ago, but when yeah. you were a kid. Yeah, it kid. was. <laughs> it was a long time ago, because I'm old. When I was a kid on the beach yeah. in Mexico, I found an octopus like about that big in the shallow water. Was it alive? It was, like, it was alive, yeah. We put it in a five gallon bucket. It was so <laughs> cool. So I love being at the beach. You know, Papa Judah, this week we're talking about living in honesty and integrity mm. with God and being mindful of our actions. And so I, you know, I'm so glad that I have come, I mm. feel like I've come a long way, especially from like when I was little, I have, you know, mm. wiser than I was uh, before. I am much wiser than I was at four. Oh, you said before. With social media and all this stuff that's happening, you know, all of our fourth and fifth graders and our middle schoolers and our high schoolers, they're all living in social media. Their lives are just surrounded by social media. Yeah, you know, and if this was on social media right now, I'd probably be like sitting in a different position. So I look perfect <laughs> instead of like human, human. listening. <laughs> well, I honest. have a story about like, being mindful of actions and honest and integrity mm. and that kind of stuff when it comes to social media actually um i just moved back to tucson but i lived in flagstaff i would post pictures and write things on my facebook and instagram like oh look at how beautiful it is it's so great up here and in reality i was really sad and i was really just missing my family back home and not wanting to be there at all i was pretending to be happy or i was pretending to be something that i wasn't and then you shared with us yeah. that you were honest with your family yeah. and uh, before that. So. Yeah, and everything kind of aligned and God was so great in that. You know, he knew the desires of my heart was to be home and that I miss my mm. family. And then we got to move back before Christmas. So we got that to spend so Christmas awesome, with man. our family. And so just being mindful of your actions and living, actually living in honesty and integrity will, you know, just be so amazing for the rest of your life if you can nail that down now but the more honest and yeah. uh, that you can be with people i mean the greater your integrity so. yeah well guys we are going to head to the beach i know i can hear it back there I this know. whole time i've been sitting here patiently <laughs> and uh, i am ready well to... good job living in patience i know i'm so proud of you yes. you're so... and i'm being honest with you that i'm ready to go <laughs> get in the water see ya And Jason, aka Popo Gijo, had some pretty wild stories from your childhood. Yeah, the point of all those stories though was that we don't have to pretend we shouldn't lie and we should live in integrity though. Mm, integrity. So honesty and integrity. Yeah. They're very similar. Very. 
but there's just like a one slight difference. So yeah. honesty obviously is, you know, not lying, you're telling the truth, but like integrity, can you kind of explain what you think integrity means? Yeah, I think integrity is more like within. So, you know, being true to who you are, being honest with who you are, you know, so honesty, you have like little white lies or something like that. That has yeah. like way more to do with honesty than it does integrity. I think integrity is a little bit on the grander side of it where it's like, it comes from within. It's not even just within us though. Like it's not something that we just pull out of ourselves and we say we are this way because we are this way. Like yeah. God created us a certain way and he intends for us to act a certain way to be his advocate in the world. Yeah. And you know, we have to be living in integrity in that way. And yeah, through him, live in integrity him. Yeah. through him. A lot of the time we worry about what others think instead of being honest. Yeah, we start putting on those masks and you know, I'm, I'm not gonna go to a doctor who uh, cheated through med school. I wanna go to people who are honest and you know, know the, what they're doing. We have to live an honest life full of integrity, which isn't easy to do. We're Good human enough. and we make mistakes. That's why we have to rely on God. Yeah, which brings us to our one thing. With God, I will live in honesty and integrity. And let's all say that together. With, With God, God, I will live in honesty and integrity. integrity. And that makes me think of a story from when I was like maybe six years old. So <laughs> I'm six years old-ish, a little kid, right? Me and my brother were watching TV and uh, it's a show I'm not allowed to watch. Nothing bad, but just something my parents didn't like me watching. At six. At six years old. <laughs> I mean, important, they have rules. Um, and my dad starts coming down the hallway, I hear his footsteps, I'm like, I know what I'll do. I'll turn the TV off. He'll never know what I'm watching, right? That's how it works. <laughs> you turn the TV off and it just magically <laughs> goes away. So I turned it off and he walks in, he's very suspicious. What were you watching? Nothing. I'm not watching anything. Like, duh, duh the TV's off. Yeah, sound to no sound. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> I have a six year old, give me a break. So he does the uh, smart thing and turns the TV <clears throat> back on to see what I was watching. So Oof. I lied, I got in trouble, and I had to deal with the consequences. Now, the results were not necessarily drastic for me. Like, I'm not gonna go to prison. I'm a six year old, but. That would uh, be a pretty intense to go to jail for that. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been. But there's consequences when we lie because our thoughts become feelings, our feelings become actions, and at that point, we're dealing with an issue of the heart. And we see that from a true story in the Bible too. But there was a certain man named Ananias who with his wife Sapphira sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. Acts 5, 1 through 2. So he was lying and the consequences might be today, you know, in comparison might be, you know, tax fraud or robbery. Yeah. And for those, you go to jail. Yeah, right? he, you do. He definitely had a different consequence, and let's get into that now. Yeah. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not sell, as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. Acts 5, 3 through 5. So, I mean, let's just clarify. Um, this Bible verse is not saying you lie, you die. Instead, <laughs> it's teaching us that when we lie or live in dishonesty, there are consequences and that just happened to be the consequence he faced. Yeah, and that was because he lied to God and that was the consequence that he was no. But we can learn from the story. Like we can learn to be mindful of our words and our actions and that actually brings us to our first point. Number one, be mindful of my words and actions. Have you ever had like a moment where, you know, you're talking to a friend or whatever, or your parents, and you say something that's obviously a lie or like it hurt their feelings and you're like, why did I do that? Or why did I even say that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean all the time, I think. <laughs> I mean, we're human, we're gonna make mistakes. Yeah, the problem for Ananias though, is that for us, it is that we think about dishonest things and instead of stopping that thought, we allow it to dwell in our minds and then it becomes a reality. It becomes our actions then. Yeah, and then it becomes an issue with our heart. So mm. 
So how do we practically handle this? It's something we're going to deal with all the time. We're human. We make mistakes. This is going to happen again and again and again. And sometimes it happens with the same issue again and again and again. Yeah, but when we're being mindful and we run into a situation like that, we can stop and pray. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's one of my favorite things to do is just like, I've got this thought. I'm going to stop and pray. Yeah. And, you know, another thing I like to do is focus my thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and lovely and pure and admirable. And that actually comes from uh, this verse in Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. What are some things that you guys know about that are true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Like, sometimes I get these thoughts about myself of like, oh, I'm not good enough, I should give up, I should be done. That's not what God says about me. Mm -hmm. If you look in the Bible, I know He says that I am His creation, I am His masterpiece, and He made me, He knit me together in my mother's womb. Like, we're beautifully and wonderfully made. I can look at those and say, that's true, that's honorable, that's right and pure and lovely. Yeah. You know, we have to look at what's going on up here and compare it to what God says. Yeah, and I think, you know, especially for you guys, it's easy to get in that mindset of you're not good enough or you're not pretty enough, you're not athletic enough. And those are not, you know. That's not what God says. That's not what he wants for you and that's not how he made you. No. And, you know, back to our one thing, with God, I will live in honesty and integrity. And to live this way, we have to one, be mindful of our words and actions, Number two, be transparent with God and with others. Yeah, I want to go back to our Bible story of Ananias, though. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, was this the price you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she replied, that was the price. And Peter said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door, and they will carry you out, too. Instantly, she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Acts 5, 7 through 10. She knew what she was doing was wrong. She knew what her husband did was wrong. Yeah, and I mean, if you look back at the previous part, she and him had actually agreed, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make this plan. Yeah. They're thinking about it. It's dwelling in their mind. And they chose to be dishonest together and not just to their community not just to each other but to god yeah and the consequence in that for them was you lie you die for us it's not that and we're not necessarily yeah. gonna die when we lie but you know internally maybe a piece of you does die in the sense of like you know you're losing a little bit of yourself every time you yeah. lie Ooh, don't yeah want that. which is you know being authentic is so in right now in. yeah because I mean, you hear it on you know people on vlogs and all that kind of stuff. Um, you hear so much of that that you yeah. know. Let's be authentic. You know, I've seen so many people speaking about it who are working hard to look authentic while living a second life, though. And that second life is you know usually full of dishonesty. And you know, I you guys, I talked about that um, that story in the video of you know when I was living in Flagstaff and I was posting on my social medias that I was, you know, loving it up here and it was great and it was wonderful. And inside I was like, this is miserable. I want to go back home. I miss my family. Like she I hated every second of it. I did. And so like I was living that double life. It wasn't, it wasn't healthy for me or my marriage or, you know, my family around me that thought that I was okay. And they, you know, if they knew that I wasn't okay, they would have been able to reach out. Um, you know, and that's kind of like, you know, if you're hurting the relationship with, you know, my husband or with my family, I'm also hurting my relationship with God and the church. Yeah, for sure. To be authentic is to be transparent with God and with others. Yeah, when we live in honesty and integrity, it feels good. We're at peace with ourselves and we know that we're doing the right thing. And to live that way is not easy. Like, you know, we're humans. Again, I'm gonna keep saying that we are humans. Yeah. But our memory verse reminds us to press on and not focus on things in the past. And I really encourage you to start memorizing this verse. Philippians 3, 13b through 14. 
I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Yeah, so, you know, living in honesty and integrity, you know, with that verse above, talking about how relationships are truer and less drama and all that kind of stuff, you know, I can't live in the past. I just have to realize that that wasn't right and I have to move on. I yeah, have to do better and, you know, I have to be a truer version of me. Yeah, and you can only really do that with God because I'm going to just bring you back to the one thing. With God, I will live in honesty and integrity and we can't do that ourselves. We yeah. are human. That's why we have to do it with God. Yeah, um, this is something that is attainable. It's not some fairy tale that is like, oh, I can never be honest and I can never live yeah. in integrity. You know, I, it's attainable. If you told six year old me like, hey, you lied that one time, you'll never be honest again. Like that would have been <laughs> terrible. Living yeah. in honesty and integrity can be difficult, but it's worth it. It brings peace to our minds. It brings mm -hmm. a sense of fulfillment and it can't be found anywhere else. It, it really allows us to be who God created us to be. Exactly. Through the example of Jesus, we are called to walk in this path of truth and integrity. And in doing so, we bring glory to God. And by living our lives with honesty and integrity, we can, you know, inspire others to do the same thing. Yeah. So here's our challenge for you. Not only this week, but really just for life. But I want you to just try it this one yeah. week. Pick one of the points from today and focus on putting them into practice. Yeah, and we're, you know, we're going to pray with you as you commit to taking this next step because it is a hard step. And, and trust me, I get it growing up. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be real and true with you guys right now. I lied all the time. <laughs> like, and it wasn't like a mischievous, like, I'm going to lie. Like, sometimes I just lied because it was just easier than telling the truth. And, you know, it got me nowhere. It really hurt my relationship with my parents. And even oh, yeah. into adulthood, like, I've had to work really hard to repair that relationship. And I know that some of you may be in that same boat. And so it's not an easy step. I no. get it. But if you start now, it's going to be easier in the future. Yeah. And if you start now, you know, you're going to have less pain, less drama, all that kind of stuff. So take one of those steps this week and, you know, commit to doing it. Yeah. Let's pray together. We want to pray for you as you take this step. Yeah. Dear God, we just thank you so much for bringing us together so that we can learn more about you, so we can learn more how we can be more like you um, through being honest, through being having integrity in our lives. Um, I pray that you just help not only all those people watching this, but also us teaching this, that we can live in honesty and integrity. We can be more like you. We can be mindful of our actions and focus on you when, when we start thinking those thoughts that lead us to dishonesty. I pray that you help us focus on being true and pure, honorable and right. And I pray that you just help all of us to show your character to the world and show your love to everybody that we are encountering day by day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week for some more adventure with a very, very, very special guest.